but great i am i am going to first start this entire session today by introducing you all uh, to sudeep and this this man has done so many things i have known him uh, when we worked together for a few workshop and courses with my captain but it's this this person has even got an award by the president apj by then president apj abdul kalam and i'm just going to you know quickly um walk you through guys as to what he has done and then we are going to move right into the session today there are some massive questions and some very very interesting questions that we have got on twitter on instagram for sudeep and i don't want to take up much time uh doing the small talks but we'll we'll just focus on understanding how to become a financially independent writer um so sudeep is a writer and creative solutions consultant he has received awards including the national award for creative writing in the year 2004 which was given to him by then india's president apj abdul kalam he has also won the maji metro poetry poetry prize in 2016 his poems have been published in journals and anthologies including kitab which is from singapore the sunflower collective yugen quest isolocation the shape of a poem and the yearbook of indian poetry in english which was in the year 2020 to 21 Two of his poems are taught at the middle school level in the United States of America. Uh, I I don't know how did you manage to do that, but I want to know more about it. Uh, to tell you all more about Sudeep, he is also a trainer and he has been invited for guest lectures at various colleges in Mumbai and Bangalore, and he has conducted various workshops and master classes uh, with the edtech platforms like My Captain, Your Coat, and other startups. You can also watch his TEDx talk with Versova Salon to hear him speak about his passion for writing uh, and the process that he follows. And if you are lazy enough to go to YouTube and check out his uh, TEDx, this session is where he is going to address a lot of questions that you all have shared. So great that you all are here. One final request that please keep yourself muted and please feel free to turn on your videos. And throughout the conversation, you can send. as many questions as you can through the chat section yash and sushrita are here who are noting uh, down the questions and we'll address them but uh, thank you sudeep once again for giving us your time on a saturday evening i know everyone here must be having some weekend plans but thank you so much everyone for joining and thank you so much sudeep for being here with us today thank you for inviting me pavan um i appreciate uh, the fact that pepper reached out to me to do the session and uh, one of the reasons i agreed to despite it being a saturday as you just mentioned was i strongly strongly believe that it's important to uh, to help those who are exploring uh, career options as freelancers especially in the the field of content and communications to have the requisite knowledge to have the requisite um, base knowledge to begin their journeys it is something i did not have access to myself when i began and you know i i think that's how we grow right as we learn we we help others out in turn so i'm really excited to be here and i'm looking forward to the questions and i hope that by the end of this session um doubts will have been answered questions will have been resolved and most importantly i hope that those here will have gained the confidence to either take the first step into the world of being a financially independent freelance writer or if not that to continue their journeys in whatever they are doing and explore this as an option on the side yeah so deep uh, and you know what you mentioned that you know at least through this conversation some folks might get that one boost of confidence i think that's really really important sometimes all that we need is just like one boost of confidence to really follow and you know pursue what we really want to do and you know i want to start this uh, entire conversation by knowing something very basic first and then we'll deep dive into more specific questions about financial independence and the entire freelance uh, writing bit how does one get started let's let's imagine it's 2021 i have uh, just graduated out of some some degree in the college it could be bba engineering whatever but i have really uh, i really want to pursue freelance writing and you know copywriting as as an option on the side how do i get started uh, as of now let's say considering in today's time how how do how does one get started uh well pavan the answer to that is very simple and before that let me just preface that by saying there hasn't ever in the history of mankind i'd say been a better time to get started especially as a freelance writer um the opportunities that are now available 
are unrivaled, unparalleled, both in number and quality. And there's a very specific reason for this. And the reason, of course, stems from the fact that uh, the pandemic has come um, as a double-edged sword in the sense that it has been massively damaging in so many ways. But from a professional perspective, right, it's changed the whole paradigm of how people look at work. Work doesn't have to be limited to or constrained to one location anymore, where you wake up at 8 in the morning and you reach your office, which is a specific building in a specific location, right, at a specific time, and you're there for a specific number of hours. You can't leave the office. At, the, at most, you could probably go out for lunch and come, but you have to come back there. And once you're done with your day is when you start your other life, right? Whatever your hobbies are, whatever side work you want to pursue. That, that paradigm has not just changed, it's been demolished completely and is being reconstructed every single day right now. Um, as we spoke before we began, I myself am in Goa right now, right? And I don't say this to brag or boast, uh, although it's a very good place. Um, I say this to illustrate uh, my point where, um, which is that you can work from anywhere, right? All you need is a computing device. This could be a tablet, it could be a laptop. And I understand that not everybody can afford their own. It can literally even be a phone as well, right? It, it doesn't even have to be beyond that. Um, worst case scenario, you want to go gadget free. All you need is a pen, paper, and you need somewhere where you can find a stable internet connection where you can type stuff out and send it, right? Yeah. Um, getting started in 2021 is one of the simplest things to do thanks to the power of the internet, obviously, right? And networking. You, you mean need the number of... See, back in the day when Orkut started, you guys remember Orkut? Uh, yeah. Can everyone show me a thumbs up? Can those who remember Orkut show me a thumbs up? It came before Facebook. Yeah, right? Uh, back in those days, it was all about, you know, meeting your friends of, uh, online and sharing connections with them. You wrote testimonials for each other. And the awkward testimonial has now become a LinkedIn testimonial, right? That said, LinkedIn today is not the only place you can find a job, right? Yeah. Facebook is a great place to find a job. Instagram is a great place to find a job. Any social network that you are active on is a great place to find a job. Uh, just yesterday, I was with a friend who's living in Goa, and he himself finds gigs, freelance gigs, um, through Instagram, right? He's a visual artist. So what he does is he puts his work out there. The most important thing to get started is to be visible, yeah. right? Um, at the end of the day, if you're selling your services, right? Remember, you're not selling yourself. You're not selling your soul. You're selling your services as a writer. But as a writer you are a product in that sense, right? And that product has to be marketed somewhere, right? Now you obviously are not going to uh, sit outside an old bookstore in Bangalore with a typewriter and uh, hope for a career. That, that's not going to work. It might have worked a few decades ago, but not now. Where do you do this? Where do you do the very same thing where people are going to walk by and see you? You have to create your own marketplace, right? And this, this could be literally any social media that you are active on. It doesn't have to be LinkedIn. It doesn't have to be Facebook. Hate Facebook, go to Instagram. Hate Instagram, go to Twitter. Most freelancers I know right now and who I have worked with and who I continue to work with uh, are all on social media. So put yourself out there. Let people know that you offer a service, that you have a certain skill. Now, let me tell you as someone who's not just a writer, but also someone who uses services of other freelance writers. Mm. Um, I'm not always able to gauge someone's skill immediately, right? If I see 10 people are not going to um, be able to gauge even with their portfolios, whether or not they are the best at what they do. You might just be starting out. All you have to do for me to hire you is convince me that it's worth giving you a shot, right? Mm. So if you have a standout portfolio, Right. If you have something that's absolutely outstanding, stunning, it doesn't matter if you've just done two gigs before, if you've written for two companies before, you've written one article before. Stun me with that article or stun me with that. It could be whatever, right? It could be a poem, it could be a story, depending on what you exactly want to do. And the, the odds of you getting hired for that gig eventually. Yeah. So 
So, so I, I think to condense that, to condense that, what I will tell you is put yourself out on social media. Um, make sure that your social media is constantly updated with the latest creative work that you are doing, whether you're an artist, whether you're, I mean, since we're talking about writing, let's talk about writing, right? So if you're a poet, put your poems out. If yeah. you write scripts for short films, put your short films out and let people know that, hey, I wrote the script for the short film, or I wrote, I wrote the screenplay for the short film. Uh, if you write lyrics for bands, right? Put that song video out and put the lyrics in the caption. That's how people are going to start noticing you. I'm not saying don't post anything else on your social media, right? You had a wonderful dinner with your friends. Please post that. But make sure the very next morning, you also post something that people are going to notice and connect with you as a writer. Mm. Yeah. Sudeep, I have one question here. So, sure. is there something like, okay, agar aap poetry likhte ho to usme bahut demand hai or let's say if you're copywriting for the saas industry or fintech industry right now usme demand hai and as a writer should you go about finding your niche or whatever category you want to do based on what the market is right now or you should really follow what you are interested in like let's say i want to write about travel but travel as an industry is not that going great right mm -hmm. so what should i do as a writer do i follow the market or do i follow what i am good at so let me, that's just a question. let me try to answer this as best i can uh, there are multiple answers but i'll give you a couple of perspectives that i have um so the so throw up between being a specialist or a generalist Hmm. If it is that, my answer to that would be, you don't have to be one or the other. You can be both. In fact, I would even go a step further to say it's important to be both in today's day and age, in today's market, right? Um, if you are specializing in something and that's all you, that's all you want to do, and that's all you want to do, that's fine. You may a contest, but you struggle to get out of that uh, phone, right? Sudeep, just one second. I think your voice is breaking. Why don't you try turning off your video and just keeping the audio on? Audible uh, now? I think much better than before. Am I? Yes, okay. yes. It's better? Yeah, but, but go on. I mean, if, if, if it cracks again, I'll tell you. Uh, all right. So, um, thing was it's both a specialist um, open enough and skilled enough to write about a, a gamut of things you see I think it's it's still lagging let me just connect with Sudeep and then uh, Sudeep you want to and and rejoin okay huh? that's that's what he was trying to do but um yes i think there is there's some interesting question here already in the chat let me uh just go through it and probably i can club them when sudeep joins back and we can ask him about it uh we'll be covering Achha, okay no this is something else i've been struggling with writing what should i write about where should i write from i haven't got i haven't done any gig at all okay um hello from Dubai, I agree with Sudeep that this is the best time to, even in the UA, which historically issued resistance results only to people on sponsored work. Um, but people finances, including writers. Yeah, I think it doesn't matter today, right? Geographically, also, if you are from India or from UA or anywhere across, it's like you can have a client who's based out of US or Africa or Australia, anywhere, literally anywhere. And I think. That's the best part about the entire, uh, you know, like the entire digital space in the internet world that we are in today. I'm also just going to, okay, Sudeep is back. Uh, let me just, Sudeep, where can I see you? Oh, great. Uh, Sudeep, 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 Sudeep. Uh, got him. Hey, Pawan, can you hear me? Is it better now? Yes, yes, now better. Great, I'm glad to hear that. Yes, yeah, so, so we're talking about how should we either follow like the industry trends or should we follow what, what we really want to do? 
Yeah. So um, I, let me retreat what I was saying because I think you might have missed out some of the audio back then. So what yeah. I was getting at was I think in today's day and age, it's important. It's as important to be a generalist as it is to be a specialist. So I don't think it's one or the other. It's not either or. I think yeah. while you might specialize in something, it's important to be open enough to be able to write about other things as well. Um, you never know what kind of gig you're going to get and how well. A particular gigs going to pay you. So let's say that you specialize as a writer on fintech, right? Um, mm. Fintech, edtech, take any one of these categories, psychology, whatever. Um, mm. You might have developed your niche in that. You might be getting a lot of work. Uh, you might end up getting a lot of uh, articles that you end up writing on that specific topic. But mm. let's say someone comes to you and says, "Hey, uh, I need you to write to me an article about World of Warcraft," and mm. you're you've never played a game in your life, right? Um, but what if that gig, you can always say no, but what if that gig pays you really well, right? Mm. Would you turn it down? Would you want to turn it down? Um, I wouldn't turn it down. If you wouldn't turn it down, right? Well. I mean, my first content writing gig in life was to write 50 unique articles on gold in World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft gold. So it's an in-game currency and you can purchase it offline as well. And I knew absolutely nothing about World of Warcraft, man. And uh, I had to write 50 articles, right? Um, I had two choices. I could either turn that down or I could say, hey, you know what? I'm going to take a chance on this. Um, let me do my research, right? Um, you know, Pavan, if you asked me this question five years ago, six years ago, um, I'd say, well, you know, certain certain things are hard to write about, right? Yeah. Um, if there's something I don't know about, how where will I get information about this? Uh, I can't always rely on Wikipedia. But let me tell you something, Wikipedia standards have massively uh, improved over the years. And mm. it's not just Wikipedia, right? I mean, there's so, so many open source libraries. There's so many resources that you have access to in, uh, in order to get information, the requisite information on a particular subject to mm. start writing about it, right? So think about it this way. Um, when you are designing a building, right? Mm. You're not going to figure out what goes in the building first in terms of um, your first thoughts, not going to be, okay, I'm going to put a sofa in there. Mm. The curtains are going to be the shade. All mm. those come later. First, you're going to figure out what the framework is, right? Mm. Um, and if you want to build a temporary house, mm. so imagine a tent, right? Now you take your tent and you pitch it anywhere. Today, I took my tent and I pitched it next to the beach. Tomorrow, I'm going to take my tent and pitch it next to a mountain. Um, day after tomorrow, I'll take my tent and pitch it next to a river, right? The tent, as long as you know how to assemble the tent, that is what matters. So if you know the basics and the framework of pitching your business to people, of getting the business and delivering quality output on time, mm -hmm. um, and if you're open enough and flexible enough to, to let yourself write about things that you might not be the most familiar or comfortable about, that, that widens your horizons massively and, and lets people know that, hey, you're available to write about a variety of things rather than just one specific thing. Um, of course, if you do specialize in one particular thing, you're going to get a lot more work in that area. But my point here is, I'm not saying don't specialize, but if you do specialize, be open to um, writing about things that you're not very confident about either. Mm -hmm. And Thanks for answering that because that's that's something that uh, you know a lot of people sometimes figure when when they're actually like just starting it out that should I really follow what I'm passionate about or should I like you know have like a combination of it or just go by the uh, trends and it's I think it's to like from that up it's very important that you first develop that skill of writing and then eventually you can you know just write for any category or industry altogether. Absolutely. And, and before I move into more now entirely towards financial aspects and those kind of questions, I just wanted to clarify here to everyone who's uh, live here and probably will watch this later as to what's really the difference today between copy and content. Are we copywriters? Are we content writers? Uh, is, is there differences between these two terms or just, just want your... Uh, clarification in this and what you think about this entirely. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up because this is a question that is not asked enough at all. Right? Um, it's something I didn't know about uh, when I first started out. Hmm. It's something a lot of people know a little about but not very much about. Hmm. And it's important, it's very important to 
uh, understand the distinction between copy and content. Uh, think about it this way. Um, content is basically um, uh, an ice cream, right? Yeah. It can be of any flavor, right? Yeah. Um, throw, throw, throw me, so throw some people's favorite flavors at me. What are they? Strawberry, I guess. Um, one last thing. Apart from vanilla is my favorite. Anything apart from vanilla is fine. Right. So exactly. Right. So imagine content is like chocolate. Uh, sorry. It's like, it's like ice cream. And um, when you go to an ice cream parlor, when you go to Baskin Robbins, when you have 32 varieties of ice cream in front of you, how do you choose one that sounds good to you? Because let's, let's not uh, lie to ourselves. Sometimes a lot of these ice creams look similar. We all know it's going to be sweet. What, what distinguishes one ice cream from another? Right. Mm. So when I read the description about that ice cream, Mm. Uh, or when I look at how the ice cream is arranged, um, are there sprinkles on the ice cream, right? Copy is a spin that you put on content. Um, a content writer may not always be able to write copy and vice versa. A copywriter may not always be able to create the best content. Mm. Um, copywriter, so when you think about copy, it's more marketing out, it's more brand out. Uh, mm. It's something that you, um, that people end up reading and getting influenced by content is is the, is the is the thing that you want people to dive deeper into but what is the hook for people to dive deeper into that content that is where the copy angle comes in so um a lot of the like for example headlines right whether it's a newspaper headline or a headline of a facebook article um the article itself is content but the headline is definitely copy right yeah. uh, in in that sense so it's it's not very easy to um, distinguish between sometimes the lines get blurred right yeah. sometimes the lines get blurred and that's fine there's just nothing wrong with with the two blurring into each other but my point is that when you're getting started out at least right it's very important to know and why pavan am i uh, saying this i'm saying this because often i have seen young uh, writers who mm end up taking their very first gig as a mm. copywriter thinking it's going to be content or mm. taking up a content gig thinking it's going to be copy and that really doesn't work out for anyone right it, yeah. it, it won't work out for the client because you there's a mismatch in expectations and understanding mm. so you're going to deliver something from a copy perspective and the client wants content or vice versa so um, the client's not going to be happy with your work and you're going to feel bad about the fact that you didn't deliver your best, even though you might be the best writer in the world, right? But if you're not, if you're not matching up to what the client expects, then it's, it's, it's a failed deal, right? That at the end of the day, because I'm not writing to, to please myself. I'm writing for someone else's financial needs. Um, it's, it's a transaction at the end of the day. And that I think is, is uh, very important to keep in mind um, the distinction between copy and content. Um, it's not something you need to actively think about every single day, but knowing about it will help you as you're starting out to avoid the wrong kind of gig for you at that time. Got it. Got it. And uh, thanks, the once again, very interesting perspective about uh, copy and content uh, altogether. I never thought uh, this would be such like distinguish uh, altogether. Before I move on to more now questions and some questions from the audience as well. If you've been enjoying till now what we are talking about, please feel free to put us like IG story, Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever, wherever you guys are active. Uh, just, just helps us and gets that little validation that okay, Saturday ko session rakke, which is also like a non-working day for us. Uh, we get that little bit of happiness and validation. But uh, now I'm going to Sudeep ask you this question by Kajol, who's asking, uh, and now this is specifically about, you know, the financial aspects of freelance writing, that what shall be the pay per word for beginner freelance writer? And will the rate change for technical content writing? And also Sudeep, if, if you could cover the whole, how do you price your freelance writing as a question, that would also be really great here to understand. Okay. So when it comes to freelance content writing, um, a lot of people are going to try to rip you off, mm. right? They're going to end up saying they're going to pay you uh, 25 paise per word. There are mm. people I've seen who have been like, I'll pay you two paise per word. And right, I've seen writers who are so hungry for work that they'll, they'll say yes, yes, thinking that, you know, okay, 
if I write well for this client, this client, you know, I'll get more work from them. And they think volume translates into wealth, but that's not true, right? Um, because a client that that underpays you at the very outset is going to continue underpaying you regardless of the quality of of content you you give them. At the end of the day, it's it's very important to understand um, what exactly it is that you're offering, right? Mm -hmm. Um, let me be very clear. It doesn't matter whether you have 10 years of experience or 10 months or 10 days of experience. If you believe you're worth something and you can charge it and people are going to pay you, charge it. Uh, oftentimes what yeah. happens... But so deep, here is, uh, is a dilemma that I have. Okay, uh, like imagine I have not at all started freelance content writing. Uh, uh, and I feel like, okay, no, I will charge 10 rupees per word. I will write a lot of books. I will write a but because I don't have any experience as such in the past, I don't have any clientele to show. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you go about this, this, this like dilemma or like the challenge that as an individual you might face? I, I hear you. See, ek to pavan industry rates to hote hai. you know, you can always talk to other content writers. You can figure out uh, what certain content market, what people on certain content marketplaces are paying, what clients are paying, what a particular kind of client is paying. Um, you know, corporate entities might pay a certain, might be willing to pay a certain amount. Somebody else might be willing to pay a completely different amount for for similar content that you end up writing. Um, my point is that um, if you are confident enough to charge a certain thing, now if you're going to charge something unrealistic like ten rupees per word, and you're not obviously, I'm going. If you're saying, see, if I have the budget, let me tell you this: I have met people who charge ten rupees per word, and I've met people who paid for ten rupees per word. Mm. Um, and these writers have been really good, right? Mm. Obviously, but if you charge me that much, Pavan, I'm going to tell you, I have two sample articles. Mm. Yeah. You give me two sample articles, I'll pay you for those sample articles also, or I might not pay you, whatever. But the mm. point is that if you decide that you're going to charge 10 rupees per word, and you think you can blow your client's mind with mm. the sample articles that you send in, go for it. Or the client himself or herself will say that, you know, sorry, I can't afford to pay this much. Um, my, my point is that why start low when you can start high and meet in the middle, right? Oftentimes people undervalue themselves. That is, that is the problem I have. Mm. People think that, um, content, content writing, mein paisa nahi hai. That's, that's absolute mm. bullshit, man. Because, um, the, the truth is that there are people who are not just becoming financially independent, but becoming actively wealthy through content, mm. right? Mm. So it's a great space to be in. It's, it's all about, yes, it, while it is about experience, it's equally about confidence and your skill, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a 16 year old and you're a brilliant writer and you think you're worth 10 rupees a word and you can find clients who will pay you that much, go for it. Far be it from me or anybody else to stop you. But you also have to be practical. If you do that for one month, two months and three months, and you find that yeah, I'm not getting any gigs at all, even though I know I'm that good. Maybe then bring it down to maybe five rupees per word. If, you, if after a few weeks of that, you feel people are still not paying me, okay, bring mm -hmm. it down to two rupees per word, one rupee per word, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You will eventually realize what your writing is worth uh, mm -hmm. based on what people are paying you. Mm -hmm. Got it. And now here, there's one more aspect in this uh, paper word and this entire kind of pricing. Um, a lot of people say that sometimes the paper word method is not like the really best way. Because a particular article might require a lot of research. So is it okay that you can pitch based on the time commitment or effort or anything of that manner? Like Manlo, uh, me doing like 50 articles or 10 articles might require a lot of effort and research or some, let's say software or um, other products also. Like if, if I need like SEM Rushka, uh, some access, so I'll have to pay for, you know, those HubSpot ke kuch keyword related research that I might have to do. So is pay per word only the method to go for pricing your writing or we can also like have like other lump sum amount that we um, can pitch. So Pavan, if you ask me, I would say that pay per word is for when you can't find anything else. Um, okay. That should, that is, and has been my last resort always. Um, okay. I would suggest charging people on a project basis, right? Mm -hmm. Someone comes to me and tells me that they want, um, they want articles written. Obviously I'm going to ask them how many articles do you want? Right. Yeah. Um, I'm going to figure out how much time I take to write one article. 
Mm. I'm going to figure out how many articles I can write per day. Right. Mm. Uh, now think about it. This think about it in terms of this, right? If you are able to factor in and if you are able to build in charges for your time, if you are able to build in charges for your effort, mm. um, it helps the client as well because the client knows exactly how much time you're spending on a particular article. If the mm. client real, if the client decides that they want more articles and mm. that you have the bandwidth that you're able to deliver articles with speed and alacrity, mm. then you might end up getting even more work, right? So I would suggest exploring the project model. So tell a client that um, while you can, you know, um, work with me on a per word basis, paper word basis, uh, mm. I would suggest that you engage me on a project basis. Tell me, give me a lump sum, right? Give me a lump sum. Tell me how many articles are to be written. And, um, you know, this is a fixed time. And based on that, uh, what I personally do is I tell people, okay, if you, if I charge you per by word, right, this is how much it's going to cost you. On the other hand, if you, um, pay me on a project basis, the, your, the cost you incur might be a little high, but it's mm. still going to be lower compared to if you continue to give me that many articles for paper word. Mm. Right. I might charge you initially a little more or in, or if some client has told me, <coughs> okay, I need uh, 200 articles, for example, by mm. the end of this week, mm. I can always, um, what should I say? Tell them that hey, one week may yoga, but if you mm. give me two weeks, I'm going to be able to deliver this to you. And, mm. um, you know, uh, what I stand, what I normally charge is, for example, say, I I'm, I'm going to charge you 20,000 hypothetically, the random mm. figure. Right? I'm mm. going to charge you 20,000 for 200 articles. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's a very low number, I know, but I'm just giving an example. You know, 20,000, I say, okay, um, pay me the 20,000 and I'll write another 10 articles for you for free. Mm. Right? So the client's also getting more value from working with you on a project basis. The client also knows that they can trust you. The client knows that, okay, they have been, there's a contract between this individual or this freelancer and my company or me saying that they're going to deliver these many articles at the end of this week. And, um, it helps build trust for other clients as well, right? Mm -hmm. If you tell them that I have worked on projects with so, 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 and company, you know, company A, company B, company C, uh, it builds trust more than saying, Hey, I charge X per word to write articles on this subject. Mm. And I think that also, uh, gives you, uh, you know, just, you can be more financial independent in your life also then, uh, if you are charging on project basis. And I think that that should really be the way to go about. Otherwise then charging paper word becomes more like a sabji market. Mein aise kuch rahe, this, this, this sort of, so, uh, the project basis is, is more like what I would, uh, really want yeah. to see freelance writers in India, uh, charging. Now, before I move on to the next questions and some very interesting questions uh, here in the chat, everyone has shared, but here's, here's something I'm going to put as a condition. If your video is on, then only I'll take your uh, question. Otherwise it's becoming like somebody is just like over there watching Netflix and just, okay, let me throw in this question for Sudeep. If your video is on, we will accept your question. Uh, I have one question and then we'll then promise next 15 minutes, we're just going to take all audience question, make sure your videos are on. Um, so the, here is, here is like a practical situational question. I wanted to ask you, um, imagine like I see a LinkedIn post where a person who is a content manager or works at a company is look, it has put up a post saying that I am looking for a freelance writer. Uh, if, if you are a freelance writer, just get in touch with me or just comment your website or whatever, all of those things. Now, Tell me, how do you crack this method or let's say, how do you crack this project? Because a lot of other freelancers are obviously going to comment or DM that person and there would be a prize war. They would be like, okay, somebody might have like a brilliant website and I might not have a website. So what's the best way to really get this uh, project when, when it's so open out there in the market, what, what would be your strategy? and probably just share as to what some other beginners would should also like practice and do. Sure. Um, you give, you put me in the, you put me on the spot. Huh? So I wasn't <laughs> expecting a question like this, but, uh, but you know, seriously, um, there's this, um, 
Coldplay song was was it Coldplay song? Lights will guide you home. Huh. What yeah. song is that from? Fix yeah, you. Yeah. Um, fix you. Fix you. Huh. Um, there's there's this line, right? If you never try, you'll never know. Mm. If you never try, you'll never know. And intimidation is the biggest killer out there, right? I'm intimidated. I think there are people who are better than me. Uh, so I'm never going to try that in the first place. Um, mm. It's important to to reach out and say hello to people, right? So if someone's saying um, maybe purchase or maybe invest in a LinkedIn premium account where you can send uh, in mails, right? Maybe you can. So the the odds of your message reaching the person who's who's posted that particular thing uh, go up significantly. Mm. Um, reach out to people. If someone's offering work, uh, see if they've very clearly said, "I need someone with six years of experience." I'm mm. still going to tell you if you have three years of experience, you can apply, right? Mm. These are basically filtering criteria. Okay. <clears throat> now, when someone tells me I want someone with only five years of work experience, that doesn't mean that I, as a recruiter, will not consider someone with four years or three years. It only means that I'm going to discourage people <clears throat> who don't have that basic thing to not reach out to me because there's a certain standard that I'm looking for. But if you're confident that you have that standard, that a particular a uh, client is looking for um if a freelance if if a client says i'm looking for a freelancer who's worked um who's been in the content industry working for a minimum of 5 years and who has um written at least 50000 articles right um of course there'll be people who would have done that but and you might not have but why are you going to why are you going to stop yourself from you know reaching out and this um how do you increase the odds of getting seen getting noticed mm. you said that i might not have a website right mm. but pavan i'll tell you man that's not an excuse in today's day and age uh if you don't have a website it's super easy to get one created yeah you know what i'm saying yeah um if you don't have a website create a blog yeah that can become your portfolio if you don't have that create a simple pdf man and 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 send it across to people right you you need to showcase your work in some form or another show your social media um show people your social media can be your portfolio right um mm. show people show clients websites your portfolio can literally be a list of you know 35 websites that you might have worked on in the past but mm. i think i think um let's bring it back to the fact that uh, there might be writers who have never started in the mm. first place so how do they get their first gig when they see a post like this right um two ways number one as i mentioned reach out to the client tell them that you know you are confident about executing this um would you like to take a chance on me mm. often times you will find that clients end up uh, larger clients they'll end up hiring multiple writers for the same thing and then they'll take the thing that they like the best uh, i personally have worked with multiple companies that had the budget to hire five content writers to write the same article they would discard four articles and take one but all five would get paid Hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, take a chance. Number two, um, <clears throat> if the client demands that you need to have some kind of experience or something, uh, and you see that the client is working with some other writers, hmm. uh, follow those writers. Right. If if twenty people comment on that post saying that hey, I have the requisite experience. Hey, I worked with you before. Follow them. Um, see maybe they have portfolios. Right. See hmm. what kind of portfolios they have that are making them stand out. Yeah. You you hear me? And uh, I I don't know. Is it possible to share my screen? There's something that I thought I could show you guys. Yeah, sure. Let me just allow you. Uh, let me just make you the host, and then you can share your screen. One second. Sure. Done. You are the host now. Am I able to share? It? Okay. Yes. Um, I'm going to show you something interesting right now. Mm. Um. when i was applying for a job as head of content at one particular place mm. um i i didn't have the greatest portfolio okay mm. i didn't have the greatest cv or the greatest looking cv so i said mm. what do i do that's going to impress people right mm. how do i stand out so I, this is something i did and i'm i'm i'd like to show this to you guys if i may yes please you can uh, share screen now okay fantastic One second, I'm just trying that. Okay. Um, 
is my screen is not visible yet is it uh, no okay ah uh, share screen mm -hmm. yes is it now, visible now yes 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 okay so i basically put together uh, overnight uh, a menu card wow right sudeep bagedar a la carte what's on offer right so um i did this really random thing man i just i said welcome to this menu of choice offerings from the creative kitchens of sudeep here you'll find abc and reviews now obviously these are all fake reviews right but mm. the, the point was not to i mean obviously gordon ramsay didn't give me a review right <laughs> shashi tharoor didn't give me a review but this is a hook yeah right this is something that basically makes people smile makes people sit up and take notice this is something that you know is unique uh course premiere the first course appetizers things i have done things i have worked on the second course which was specific to the job that i was actually seeking right and finally dessert the other things that i have worked on and that's it and um out of 300 candidates i got the job wow i i never imagined a resume to be like a menu card also what very interesting approach uh this is right um and 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 so that's my point pavan you know um you need to be able to stand out right so you need to have the confidence number one to approach someone be bold be daring take a chance right yeah. um what's the worst that will happen you might not get that gig but at least and if you don't get that gig write to the client and let them know hey what did you not like about my profile or what did you think um why did you feel i didn't have the experience or the qualifications to work with you um if you let me know who knows you know uh, they might just write to you and tell you hey so i felt that your writing is not uh, aligned to what we are looking for or they might say that you know i actively need someone who is a science expert or whatever right and um, that's number one and number two um if once you do have that in once you're able to get in impress the hell out of them with something that they are not expecting right no mm -hmm. knock them off balance and that's really going to even if they don't hire you it's very likely that they will recommend you to other people that they know <coughs> the world of content is very small as you know pavan right yeah. um yeah. if someone like for example if you came to me saying hey sweep can you write an article for me and if i said hey i don't have the bandwidth right now but you were like dude i need it by tomorrow what do i do uh, obviously since i know you i'm going to connect you with one of you know eight to 10 different writers i know who can deliver it to you in a day mm. right and why am i going to recommend these eight to 10 writers and not another 200 i've worked with in the past because these eight to 10 have really impressed me either by their work or by their personality mm. or by their enthusiasm something or the other in their writing or the way they have presented their writing the marketing of their of their Uh, of the, of what they have to offer impressed me and therefore i will then recommend them to you and you're going to end up hiring them so mm -hmm. word of mouth plays a huge role right so yeah. don't be disheartened if if you don't get something despite all this it's all it's all part of the process right you never know where the next opportunity is going to come from so i'd say go all out yeah yeah and i think you know one one of the freelancers that i'm connected to he he said this that uh my linkedin list and my instagram list might not be that big but my email and whatsapp list is very big to get me gigs uh so sometimes through public platforms you might not get but the word of mouth you might know some relatives who might be working at some big organizations from there you might get uh some freelance gigs or just the word of mouth telling people constantly that okay this is what you do uh these these might be some of the ways that uh you know you can get those but again uh, yeah. so the very interesting take and i i have no doubts how you got the job out of the other 300 <laughs> applications um last 10 minutes of this conversation and it's going to be entirely audience questions only uh, so, and before like we move on to all the questions please just one more humble request you guys have been enjoying this entire conversation uh, just look at swishrita and yash who have been working hard for posting this and curating this entire session for you all we are at at the rate pepper underscore content instagram twitter wherever you guys want to show a little bit of appreciation please just uh, go ahead and do that post the session maybe now uh, before, uh, before you before we take the audience questions i yeah. i do want to mention this and guys for all those listening in i promise you um, this is not something that you know i've been held at gunpoint to say but um, you know in recent times i've been looking at what pepper has been doing right 
and um, you know, I'm associated with a couple of organizations that are actually working with Pepper that have engaged Pepper on certain projects. And the and um, the kind of quality work that that we've been getting as uh, the organizations I'm associated with is um, is 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 phenomenal, right? So um, I, I can see lots of comments over here talking about Pepper content, and I think it's very important to um, to bring in Pepper content when we talk about freelancers and especially freelancers who are starting out, right? Uh, never before has there been a system in place, at least in India. Uh, a, a marketplace where you can come and sign on as a writer. There would be different organizations, right? There'd be different organizations and um, they would all ask for very specific things. And some days I would get work, some days I wouldn't get work. Um, there wouldn't be meritocracy, right? That um, if, if, if the owner of the content company knew his chachis, bhatijas, bhanjas, bhaiyas, betis, dulhas, you know, whoever, and that that person wanted a job, that person's going to get it, right? Uh, I think with with Pepper, it kind of normalizes it to the to the degree that uh, you have a fighting chance, right? And uh, I think it's very important in case you guys are not on Pepper, do explore it. There are opportunities galore for freelance writers. I'm sure Pavan, you will end up talking about it, so I won't spend too much time on it. But uh, I wanted to bring this out, saying that um, which I wanted to relate this back to my first point. There's never been a better time in India than now to become a freelance content writer with the opportunities you have to earn. Yeah, yeah, and. Of course, like I, you know, not just bragging about because I am also part of the team, but the best thing with respect to Fiverr or Upwork and the difference between Pepper is because this is based on merit basis and you don't really have to do the prize war and pitch your work. Like on Fiverr, people give away an article or a blog for like $5, a thousand word article and things like that. So it's, it's, it's not like how it works on those platforms. Uh, probably post this, we, we will share like a detailed email. If you guys are not already on Pepper, we will explain you the entire process for it. So don't worry about those details and we will just email you uh, that entirely. Now, um, moving to audience questions and so many questions here. Let me just first pick one. Uh, okay, one second. How, okay, uh, Sudeep, let me know if this question is relevant or not and if you want to take this or not. Oh, sure, sure. The question is how to share samples if you are the host writer without necessarily breaking the NDA. And I think we we sort of have not touched upon the topic of ghost writing also. Uh, we hmm. just want to know from you, should people do it? And also addressing this question, if should that's we share a, examples or not? Yeah, I, I think that's a very, very relevant question asked by Parna. Um, and what my, my answer to that would be, obviously, see, if you're, an, if you're under an NDA, that's a legally binding document, right? There's no way you yeah. can mess with that. But yes. does that stop you from talking about what it is that you're writing about? Um, a friend of mine recently ghost wrote a book um, written, um, which was based on the life of an army colonel who fought in the mm -hmm. Kargil war. Okay. And um, he talked about it. I mean, he initially, so his, the, the clause in his contract was that you can't talk about your involvement in this project until the book is out. Mm -hmm. Because the book, the book uh, acknowledged him and you know, he was credited as someone who helped with the ghostwriting in parts. Um, so what he did was leading up to the launch, he talked about the fact that he was working on a book, a very exciting book that talked about the heroic exploits of army officers mm -hmm. um, during a certain war that, you know, a lot of us who are millennials today would have remembered. Now, these all references, these are all hints. Um, if you're show, like, for example, if the, uh, let's let's say hypothetically, you're, you're ghostwriting uh, a book for, um, Barack Obama, hmm. right? So we're talking hypothetically. I, I would like to imagine that I'm right. I'm ghostwriting for Barack Obama, <laughs> although I might be far, far away in the qualifying list. But yes, let's imagine. Yeah, so let's, let's have a let's have a wonderful time imagining. Yes, we can. That's what Obama says, right? Yes, we yeah. can imagine. So let's let's imagine we're writing this, right? And obviously, you know, um, I'm going to be slapped with a hefty lawsuit if I if I talk about it. Um, but I can definitely mention to a client that, you know, I have been engaged by senior members of the US government in the past to write, to help them with books of theirs. And you can be very clear about the fact that you are under an NDA. Maybe you can't mention president, but you can say I'm writing a book for a former White House official, mm -hmm. right? You, you don't mention who it is. You can yeah. talk in an ancillary manner about what the subject is of that book without mentioning the specifics. You don't divulge the name, right? And, and um, you can 
always send your own nda to people right at the end of the day so mm-hmm. if for example it depends upon how watertight your nda is with whoever you've signed with so if mm-hmm. if 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 for example it's someone i know and I, and who trust me i can go to them and tell them hey what um what if i asked this person who's asking me for to know more about this can i can i share some details which are not confidential with mm-hmm. them and ask them to sign an nda so then it doesn't go beyond them right worst case this client of yours might say no in which case you take the ancillary route and then you talk about the former white house official that you're writing for yeah Best case scenario, the person says, "Go ahead. You prepare an NDA yourself. You can find templates online. Dimer doesn't, right? And just send it to the person. Say, 'Hey, sign this uh, non-disclosure thing document, uh, so that you don't talk about it beyond.' And I'm happy to share certain details about the the ghostwriting project I've worked on." Hmm. Hmm. Got it. Um, the next question here is, and this is also a very practical, you know, question that a lot of people might go through. can somebody who's inactive on social media excel at freelancing uh, in today's world well um yes and no okay. it depends upon how dedicated you are right um if freelancing is your bread and butter mm. then you're definitely going to be online you might mm. not be on social media but you'll definitely be on um you'll be within you might be on whatsapp groups right mm-hmm. where you get where you get alerts about these things you know new gig available uh you might have a network of of uh, professionals like you who might end up sending you an email saying that hey this is a gig so this is a call for um submissions or this is something that someone's looking for mm-hmm. you don't need to be on facebook for that you don't need to be on twitter instagram for that um yeah. but but on the flip side of that is when you're not on social media when you're not very active on social media let's say uh, you get a project that does demand some knowledge of what's happening on social media right um yeah. what if you what if you're commissioned to write an article on the latest memes that are yeah. that are circulating amongst uh gen z nils yeah. right what what then um are you going to be familiar enough with what's the conversations the culture that's being made on social media as uh, it happens um are you going to be confident enough in that to take on a project like this right um being on social media does not mean you have to be an active participant in social media mm. but being on social media even as a passive observer helps you stay relevant helps you stay in touch with what's happening helps you stay in touch with um not just opportunities as i mentioned but also the culture that's being created so you're familiar with certain terminology so your family of certain updates right for example um someone comes to you and says hey i want you to write me an article on uh, covaxin and mm. uh, right and honestly i get uh, a lot of news updates the, the quickest news updates are on twitter right i'm yeah. going to know whether bharat biotech got approved by who before it comes in the times of india tomorrow yeah yeah so if i'm on twitter and i know about this i am literally as knowledgeable as anyone else in the world so i yeah. think being on social media definitely helps your case as a freelance writer mm. is it is it mandatory can you absolutely not have a career without social media no of course you can i'm all i'm saying is being on social media and leveraging it wisely makes a huge difference in a positive manner yeah yeah and i think uh, makes sense because if you're if it's your bread and butter and you are a full time freelancer and you want to make more money and you know get mm. work on more projects then it's just better if you are active on social media it, it will you know help you excel and grow at a faster rate rather than being the person who just you know wants to stay away from the internet and that guy uh before i move on to the last question i want to address something people here in the chat are asking can we create a group or can we connect with each other here's something that we are going to do we're going to take like a screenshot of this which we call like a selfie screenshot or whatever and then you're going to upload this picture on linkedin and then everyone can comment on that linkedin post saying what they do and if you are already a freelance writer in what category industry do you write so so that other people can be connected with you and because pepper has like 90000 followers who are like businesses and other creators also they will get to know about what kind of freelance writer you are so that's just like an easy public way rather than creating a whatsapp group because whatsapp group becomes a mess uh people start posting 
about ipl about getting married whatever all of those things so what we'll do is just quickly i'm going to request few more people and even sudeep if you all can just turn on your videos i will take like a quick screenshot we'll post this on the pepper page and then everyone else can just comment uh, on that post as to what you guys do uh, it becomes like a public introduction for each other okay bring bring in your best smile when i take this screenshot uh you guys want to do thumbs up victory this cheers whatever okay whatever you you guys want to do uh, i'm going to leave that up to you i'm just going to put like a smiley face super uh sudeep last question and before i get into the last question I, i just want to first thank you and the entire audience also who has been so actively engaged in the entire conversation through the chat through your thumbs ups and through the smiles and laughters that you have been showing on so thank you so much everyone who has been here on this saturday evening i'm going to ask sudeep you a very let's say common question which is um somebody here asks that how to ensure your clients don't deceive you for payments if not in advance and i think this is very often sometimes a company might you know just skip that project or you know end that campaign and they might end up not paying you or whatever and for just 5000 bucks you don't want to send them like a legal whatever uh, notice and all of those things how do you ensure that this doesn't happen uh, with freelancers how do you buy a product on amazon i will check if i can return it or not i i was just checking about this today about dry fruits and it was like no you cannot return so i was like nahi mere ko order nahi karna hai main dukan se jaake khareed lunga uh but yes like you tell me about you uh, check you check it uh, for returnability great but <clears throat> let's say you want to buy a bluetooth speaker okay okay and your budget is 2000 rupees to buy a bluetooth speaker okay um you enter your price range and and you know 75 speakers come how do you then decide which speaker to buy uh mm-hmm. sumant is right s sinha is right the people in the chat were saying reviews bang on guys right reviews it's it's very very important to understand who you're working with uh understand whether they have worked with other people in the past if possible to whatever degree possible right so for example um you can always uh quite frankly glass door reviews are very revealing so if a company comes to you and says hey i want to do i want you to do some articles for me and if you if, if it has a glass door review uh, a rating of uh, a glass door rating of 3 or under right and the employees are all saying him hey, and they don't pay our salaries on time what is what what is it likely that they're going to pay you as a freelancer if they don't pay their own employee salaries right yeah. uh, i'm not saying it's always true they in some cases they might pay the freelancers and not their own employees but my point is that do your research ask around in communities whether people other writers other freelance writers have worked with a given client understand um the payment history right so for example and always always do one thing uh, i think as a freelance writer it's very important to build in a buffer mm. so for example see we're talking about financial independence for one and i think that's something we haven't touched on really because we we've, we've talked about writing as a side gig but you're talking about financial independence i'm saying that you at least want to earn 20 30000 a month bare minimum if you're living in a city today right if you're living in a tier 1 tier 2 city you want to earn at least 15 20000 kam se kam in between in 25 whatever now in order to do that you obviously you can't be like you know i'm going to get you can't leave it to chance right if your rent is fixed at 10000 rupees a month you need at least that much right so you can't be like i'm going to get two gigs this month maybe next month i won't get a gig Hmm. that doesn't bring you financial independence right so you have to build in a buffer so what i mean by this is that some clients may pay you but they might take a long time to pay right so be prepared for that so don't expect that you know if money comes there'll be a windfall all at once or because sometimes in content um people take time right there are multiple levels of approval especially with the corporates so um it's 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 important to understand that if you have vetted a client and you're confident the client is going to pay you then the next thing to check is when they're going to pay you and build in that buffer and plan your spending accordingly right plan mm-hmm. your plan your spends accordingly um the other thing that i think uh, pavan i don't remember whether you said this about taking an advance you mentioned that um mm-hmm. 
it's very important to ask for an advance but unfortunately the truth of this industry is that you're not always going to get one right um what if you take what if the project is worth um 10000 and you ask for 50% advance 5000 and then you know because you're online right you're not face to face with someone mm. so trust especially when you're starting out trust is a big factor if this if there's a freelancer i've worked with for 5 6 years if that person says i want 50% upfront i'll close my eyes and give that amount but if a new person comes to me i might think twice about giving that person a 50% advance to begin with because mm. i'm not entirely sure what they're going to do with it right um mm. you may or may not get an advance but that doesn't have to stop you from asking for it I think ask for it. You definitely must ask for it. But be prepared that not every client is going to agree, especially in content writing, to give you an advance. Mm. If it's a project, on the other hand, Pawan, mm. for a project you can definitely ask for an advance. Which brings us back to why projects are better than you know yeah. just individual. So yeah. if, if you tell someone I'm going to do a bulk of hundred articles for you, right? Mm. I'm mm. going to take ten percent or twenty percent in advance to get started. Mm. That lets me know that you are serious about paying me as well. Mm. And um, one thing that I really, really, really wanted to mention over here is, see, Pawan, as a freelancer, no, not just as a writer, but as mm. a musician, a filmmaker, or anything, the world is filled with people waiting to exploit you, especially young people who don't have a clue about how much to expect, right? Um, and there are people who will drive their rates down, right? So if if you say fifty paise per word is the bare minimum I'm going to pay you. right which is a respectable thing if especially if, uh, when you're doing it in bulk there'll be someone who'll come in and uh, tell the client boss i'll do it in 20 paisa a third person will come and say boss i'll do it in 10 paisa what these people are doing actually whether they realize it or not is that they are destroying the um, the market space for the people who deserve to earn a living wage mm-hmm. right so my advice to you if you are starting in would be don't don't drive down your prices so much because not only are you going to damage your prospects you work for 10 paisa per word once the client is going to expect you to do it the next 10 times yeah right yeah. and the other thing is that when you do that someone who genuinely is charging a basic thing like 50 paisa per word is not going to get that because the client is going to be like ha huh, obviously i'm going to take the 10 paisa per word person mm-hmm. right so um i think i think that's really important to keep in mind that um don't undervalue yourself and it's a very small world right pawan um if you mess things up for other content writers um they're going to remember that and mm. you will not get gigs it's like a community right at the end of the day mm. um if people choose to blacklist you if marketplaces choose to blacklist you if clients choose to blacklist you if word spreads that you are not engaging in ethical practices while writing somebody asked about plagiarism you know if mm. you're flagged for plagiarism more than once I have my own reputation, right, Pawan? So if you tell me, give me a good writer, mm-hmm. and my I have a best friend who's a writer, but that best friend has lost gigs because of plagiarism. I'm never mm-hmm. going to recommend that person to you because your my professional equation with you will be ruined. Yeah. You tell me, how yeah. can that person give me a job? Yeah. Right. So it's very important to practice ethics yourself, as yeah. well as uh, maintain and uh, hold people accountable for being ethical as well in this industry. I think that that's equally important. Hmm. Hmm. I said I that was my last question, but I have a very small question. Okay, the small question is: so now a lot of people say that you should build like twelve months of savings fund. Uh, I mean, this is general, not just specifically to freelancers. Uh, like people who are salaried professionals or have their running their businesses. For freelancers, what is that safety net and that savings fund that they should like really? Uh, aim for like what what's that safety fund uh, according to you see that 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 really depends here pawan it depends upon multiple factors including your geography your lifestyle multiple things right um for some people a safety net might be i need to have um a minimum of 3 months mm. uh, worth of um of but once again see it, it depends if if the average project pays you 30000 per month mm. and you take up one project per month mm. and for 3 months you don't get a project you you need to obviously mm. have a buffer of you know 90000 in order to survive those 3 months to manage yeah. right so i think your uh, the safety net is 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 flexible it's malleable and ductile it's subject to your lifestyle your geography um 
if you in the zaman of work from home end up shifting to manali hypothetically mm. and you stay in a small place it's costing you 5000 rupees a month mm. your food is going to cost you another 10000 rupees a month that's 15000 mm. right mm. so then you can build in a buffer of um 45000 instead of that 90000 for the next 3 months so it really depends upon where you are depends upon what you what your ambitions are um what i would suggest is as you keep getting money always always save uh, anywhere between 10 and 20% of it mm. as a contingency should nothing else work out or whatever right that becomes your buffer so if you get um 100 rupees put aside 10 or 20 rupees always in order to um now some people might end up tell you put aside 50 rupees some some people might say put aside 70 rupees i'll say no i understand you know you you want to live a normal life you want to you you have things to do right you want to go meet your friends you want to chill whatever do that because otherwise you're not going to enjoy the work that you do if you yeah. can't really if you can't leverage that that money for your pleasure your satisfaction but always keep aside a very small portion of it to make sure that and it's a good practice for life in general right not mm-hmm. just about this but um eventually a point will come like um i'm pretty confident that if you start your journey in freelance writing and pursue it uh, passionately for anywhere between 6 months to a year a point will come where projects will keep coming your way automatically once people know you once people know you right in the industry it's like this yaar um you are new to a town and you don't have any friends you stay there for 3 months you stay there for 6 months in these 6 months you get invited to two parties okay now you met you know another 10 friends those 10 friends will invite you to another four parties mm. right so by the time i have stayed a year in that new town i have made about 50 60 friends who are inviting me to 10 parties right and mm. using that as an analogy for my work the more you stay active in in this industry the more people are going to get to know you the more gigs you're going to get um word of mouth right talk to people just tell people that hey listen i'm looking for a gig anything you find give it to me um mm. it's always great right because if you can't do something maybe you're caught up but you can give work to somebody else yeah i always do that pavan i tell people hey do you have some work maybe they don't have work now but then two weeks later they'll message me saying sudeep uh, yaar ek website ke liye copy likh can you do it or uh, ek ad likhna hai can you do it i need an article written on i need five articles written on this if i have the bandwidth i'll do it if i don't have the bandwidth i have five or six people around me in my inner circle who i will forward this to and i'll say that hey do you want this do you want this do you want this do you want this the likelihood is that somebody from that circle is going to take it up and they in turn when they get jobs that they can't handle give it to me so this cycle continues right yeah, yeah. mutually sustaining cycle mm. and i think uh, now coming back to the first thing that you had answered it's better that we have like project based payments because uh, you can really like plan your expenses and your life also in a much better way and if if you have a longer duration project like like a retainer client or something of that sort then to it's even uh, better right i mean imagine like for a particular client every month you will do five articles and you have like a 6 month or a 12 month contract uh, that just makes your you know life more like sustainable and also you you have that safety in your head that okay this this is getting sorted and then you on on the side you can just keep exploring through social media or you know websites and all of those kind of things uh um, yeah. think that that just once that financial safety also comes in i think i now this is this is completely my opinion if you have that financial stability right uh the work that you do you do it in a better way you are more creative and you just you just feel more safe that okay things are sorted in your life and you can focus on your work so i think once you can just figure that out um uh, ki how you can sustainably do this freelance writing full time it will just make, make your uh, output also way better absolutely but pavan I'll, i'll i'll just tell you one thing that i've learned the hard way myself right um it's great to be a freelance writer okay and that's what we all here for right uh, all of us um but often times i have seen especially youngsters who are very sold on you know doing everything freelance and then sometimes they have a 3 month 6 month 9 month dry spell and then they don't know what to do because they're not getting anything and see it's there's no magic wand that i can offer to you guys and tell you that this is a this is going to fix it you're going to get clients immediately right um 
I would say that if your freelancing is not working out and you feel it's not sustainable at that moment, explore you know short term contract jobs. Explain, mm-hmm. uh, explore maybe a con- uh, a one year contract with some company where you're working, right? Industry experience also helps in freelance writing, right? Mm-hmm. I worked for two years in education technology. Now I believe I have enough expertise to write content as a freelance writer on it. I have worked on disability rights and I've worked with NGOs. I have worked with disaster management organizations. So full time basis, एक दो सालों के साथ काम किया. So I'm saying that it's not that you're giving up your freedom or that you're giving up anything. Mm. If at all you are compelled to take up a full-time job, if freelancing is not sustainable for you for a certain period of time, I believe young uh, writers should definitely take that as experience gained and see how they can leverage that experience that they have gained into, you know, it could be anything, right? I know someone who worked as a Swiggy delivery executive, right? This guy's got a master's degree in social sciences, but he couldn't find any jobs, and he was a freelance writer. He worked as a Swiggy delivery executive, and he he then started performing uh, spoken word poetry, and then he got gigs. Right? I mean, there's there's a bunch of things you can actively do. And uh, Pavan, I hope in future sessions we get to explore other dimensions of content as well. Um, yeah. I know we've spoken about freelance writing as in content writing, copywriting to a certain degree, but writing itself, right? I mean, there are people who might hire you to write scripts for them. Mm. There are people who are going to hire you to ghost write books for them. We spoke about ghost writing over here. so that is so much more that comes to content and i mm. want everybody who's listening in right now to expand their minds right and when you think of content don't just think of articles that you're going to write mm. move beyond thinking about just that paper word model think about content in the more holistic sense anything can be content this mug in front of me can be can can become the subject of content right this yeah. content can be a short film this content can be a spoken word poem it can be a poem that you publish somewhere and you get paid If you're a poet and you're listening in right now, there are journals that pay you fifty to hundred dollars per poem they accept, and I think that's a great, you know, uh, amount to get paid for maybe a poem that you've written, right? So, okay. so Pavan, yeah, man, uh, would love to explore more dimensions of content in case people are interested. Yeah, I think next time we'll, we'll probably also uh, try and do like a longer session because one hour is not enough to talk about such a broad topic. uh but i just want to everyone who's who's still here uh just like type in like a yes did you guys enjoy the session did you learn something great today something new just type in like yes in the chat or if if you did not learn please just tell how could we have made this better yes, please. feedback is feedback is always helpful huh? yeah, yeah. um if there's something that you feel you wanted to know more about and you'd like to be answered in the most structured manner in future sessions please feel free to let us know so that we can address that yes and i'm also just going to put uh, the link to the linkedin post that we have uploaded just now thanks to yash and sushruta who has done this great job like in such small time uh, you all can go ahead and comment here on this post as to in what freelancing uh, you know domain you are in what do you write about and just just like a introduction about yourself and if you have a website just attach that website also so that uh, later when we want to tell people who oh, we have like great freelance writers with us uh, just check out this post there are 100 people in the comment here who can like just uh, they can hire directly so go ahead put out a comment as to what you do who you are maybe your website instagram anything else um uh, and that would be like great for us but do that you. and um i i just saw there's a bunch of there's some people over here whose questions unfortunately we could not address but i'll tell you what uh, if you go to pepper social media uh, i believe they've tagged me in a couple of their stories and stuff so you can feel free to reach out to me and as when i can answer your question i'm happy to do that super uh, we'll also have sudeep obviously in this post also so you can dm him directly on linkedin instagram wherever you guys feel comfortable but just make sure that you i'm i'm also just once again going to send the link here that's the post just go ahead comment over there as to what you do and if you have more questions maybe just put in your questions uh, over this post itself as a comment and we'll probably ask sudeep to answer over there but once again thank you so much everyone who joined here today on a saturday evening and also sudeep for wonderful insights that you have shared uh, i'm very sure people who were part of this they have learned some great insights and 
uh, we never know some some of the best freelancers in the next few years might come out from this session so if in the next 2 3 years you guys become millionaires billionaires become entrepreneur please don't forget uh, you learned these insights from sudeep just go ahead 3 years later just tell him a thank you uh, for your success but uh, once again thank you so much everyone and sudeep as well uh, we have to end this but promise next time when we do this we will do this like a 2 hour or a 3 hour uh, session but yes bye bye everyone take care and you look forward to have your a coming. great week and all the best to all of you thank you pavan thank you team pepper see you thank you everyone bye bye